I'm going to talk about the accessory structures, also called the appendages of the integumentary system. So extra stuff. Already mentioned some of these um, briefly. And so I want to start with a learning check. And it's just as many as you can think of without looking things up. I'll go through them in this video. So I'm not gonna go through each of these in the same detail your book does. You're welcome to look up more. I think I've got one learning outcome for all of these kind of various structures and basics of them. So hair, um, this clearly is hair. Um, hair has some important functions. So it's protective, protective against the sun, um, sweat, for example, keep um, sensory input. So we can't, our hairs themselves don't feel, but there are um, touch receptors associated with them. So we can feel when they move. Um, thermoregulation, so keeping us warm. And communication. So hair standing on end, um, that would be more so in, in other species. So here is a diagram of a hair. Um, it's clearly not a real picture. There, the shaft is the part that you, you can see. The shaft is made out of um, dead keratinized cells. Sound familiar? Just like the surface of the skin. So this looks actually like I'm pointing to there. Um, this is the hair shaft I'm talking about, as well as top, top layer of the epithelium, that's stratum corneum. This is the, the hair shaft. Um, there are various other names for the, um, the bulb is this bottom part. Um, there is a papilla down here where the blood vessels come in, various sheaths. Um, the other thing associated with hairs typically are sebaceous glands. This is a type of gland that I will talk about when I talk about glands in the last video. Um, so this is an oily-like substance that is associated with hairs, produces an, an oil. Then there's also a muscle. Um, erector, erector pili muscle is when this contracts, your hair stands on end. So this is the muscle that, that controls that. It's actually an um, autonomic nervous system response. You don't consciously control this, um, but there are little muscles associated with each hair as well. So over here, this is a histology of a hair. We will not be looking at this one, um, but these here are sebaceous glands and the hair loop, um, bulb in here. I mentioned this before, but similar to skin color, hair color is determined by different types of melanin. So these are cross sections of the hair. And you can see there's this cortex and medulla you may have seen on the previous slide, um, cortex being the outside. And then there's the different subtypes of melanin, eumelanin, pheomelanin, being the main, the main types that contribute to different hair colors. Um, as we age, we kind of lose that melanin, those pigments, and that's what makes hair gray or um, white. So it's also a melanin, a genetically determined um, melanin production type of deal, both type and amount. Nails. Um, nails have various names for all the parts of them as well. Um, you can see here, some of these are just the skin is underneath here. Um, the nail body is the bulk of the nail, what you think of as, as your nail. And that is composed of, guess what? Dead keratin filled keratinocytes. That's kind of a redundant thing to say. Dead keratin filled epithelial cells. Okay. You can read more about hair growth and male growth in your, your book if you like. Glands. Um, glands we're talking about right now are cutaneous glands. 
Why? Because cutaneous refers to the skin, right? So the glands that are in the skin. I've got a separate video on glands um, and their modes of secretion. So here, overview. We have, um, let's start over here, eccrine glands. These are, these ones right here, a schematic of them, of course. Um, this is kind of your, what you think of as sweat, so evaporative cooling um, via a very watery substance. Then we've got the ones I mentioned before associated with hair follicles. This is the oily, oily stuff that lubricates hairs. Then we've got apocrine. That's this one right here. Um, often open up next to hair follicles. Um, and these are kind of smelly. So they are often in kind of um, pubic and, and axillary regions and male facial hair. Um, so they thought to function as, as scent glands and in our ancestors, especially. And one more type of cutaneous gland sometimes categorized is mammary glands. So that produce breast milk. Um, because those also secrete to the outside and they're kind of embedded in the, the cutaneous membrane. Um, I won't talk more about those. So glands, you'll see again in the next video. Last appendage or accessory structure are touch receptors. We're going to talk about these more when we get to the somatic nervous system, um, but want to mention them here at least since they are an important component of the skin. There are several different types you can see color, um, kind of schematicized. Oh, I like that word here. So there's these free nerve endings. They're kind of just um, simple. And there's these ones that have specialized structures. So we're going to see that as an example of structure function. Um, these are going to signal information about the environment to the nervous system, to the brain, or possibly on um, spinal cord. So all different kinds of light touch, pressure, pain, stretch, um, pulsing, vibrating, etc. In all cases, those stimuli from different things that can be carried in different ways to give us the different signals, they're carried to the central nervous system via a, um, a axon of a neuron that is traveling to the central nervous system. This is gonna be called an afferent or a sensory neuron. We'll talk much more about, about that. Okay, one more learning check in this video. Two things to answer. And then the last video will be on glands.